You have it, Maria? Yes, I bought it. Yes, absolutely. I think it's a great resource. I mean, I haven't finished exploring yeah. it fully. I I just note that, you know, a lot of your resources are on there. You click a button, it comes up with educational videos. There's FAQs, uh, really, really yeah. good stuff. And I will say, Dave, that the one thing that made me want to explore this topic <clears throat> further was how difficult it is to find information about it. So when you go, Google, right. Google's a perfect example. You Google COVID-19 vaccine uh, deaths and all you find is these fact-checking articles about how no one's dying from the COVID shot when we know that they are. Wow, where did that come from? So we've gone from flat earth to talking about COVID deaths, which is complete a complete non sequitur to the whole subject of this. Oh, hang on a minute. She's the anti-vaccine COVID denier, isn't she? So now she's allowed Dave to come onto her show so now she can interject with his narrative to insert her own. Don't think I'll be paying much attention to this bit. Um, so, 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 so there's, sorry, if I can so, finish, the same thing happens with Flat Earth. You, you look at, you yeah. Google Flat Earth and you just find article after article of fact checkers and debunking. How very dare they check those facts? Well, who do they think they are? Well, hang on a minute now. Why are we putting so much effort into these search results to debunk this? Why, why isn't it an open conversation? Why are we working so hard to make sure that the information that is readily available is factually correct? Can't think why. Now it's actually flipping. Flat Earth is going to take over. And if you're not a Flat Earther, you're not, you're not in the cool gang. <laughs> Can we talk about where North is on the flat earth model first? So if we go to the images section right here and pull up the flat earth map, we'll go with this one, right? This is the Gleason's map. Oh yes, we know all about the Gleason's map, don't we? Because we spoke about this last time. Uh, the Gleason's map, as we know, is a projection from a sphere as evidenced by the patent that Mr. Gleason himself had to apply for and verify when he wanted to make his map a thing. Uh, the, paper, the patent is held at the US Patents Office and is easily searchable on Google, the amazingly verifiable fact-checking service. Um, but yeah, right down the bottom, which the flat earthers seem to hate, it does actually say specifically that the Gleason's map is a projection from a globe. So here's how it works. I got a magnet at the center right here. So I got a compass and the needle is pointing towards the center, okay? Compasses only work on a flat level surface, okay? And as I try to push this west, because west is right here, I have to keep turning because that needle always needs to point towards the center. Is it me or was he turning that compass with his finger as he turns it around his little flat map? I might be getting paranoid, but it really does look like he's actually turning it as he moves it. Maybe. But right here, I'm gonna try to go west and I'm gonna follow a straight line. I'm not gonna correct to the north. And as soon as I start moving, so there's west, that stick is pointing west from where I am right now. And as I go, watch, the needle just turned, I'm heading south, right? South is every direction away from north. So, you know, go, you can do this yourself, get a magnet, that's north. Every direction away is south. So south is every one of these radial lines. Every line is heading south. Now, if I try to head south on a flat earth, I'm not gonna end up over here. I'm just gonna disappear. On a ball, you can go south and come back up. But guess what? Nobody has ever done it. Um, I did a little bit of research into this and there's a very good reason why um, not a lot of people have flown directly over the South Pole. Um, people have got close and they've turned around. The reason being, there's nothing there. Um, it's amazingly cold. The point is that if wherever you fly on the planet, FAA regulations or whatever regulations state that if you're going to set off on a plane journey, you have to be able to get to a safe point of landing within a certain distance. Uh, you know, have a mechanical failure, fuel line, any kind of issue. Um, if you're flying out the surface, because it's so cold and inho inhospitable, it is not recommended that anybody tries to fly directly up below so I dare say somebody has I couldn't find it myself on good old trusty Google again there's no point doing it if there's no point doing it if so if you were to take off the southernmost airport say Santiago and try to fly over the South Pole if you did so after the South Pole from that point as Admiral Byrd said there's an area the size of North America and if you get into trouble there you are screwed
you have to be out like I said before you have to be able to put within reach within reason of a safe landing area there isn't one you're literally flying over the continental United States and it's minus and if it's minus 57 degrees on the peninsula it's minus god knows what at the south pole and as i said before you get in trouble to there there's no rescue mission and quite frankly the opinion of a flat earther isn't reason enough for anybody to risk their lives just to satisfy your curiosity every time they try to do it they end up going south and then they turn around and they come back okay so you're saying that, no that, one yeah. has ever managed to but to, to travel Circum south around circumvent the earth um not even explorers no nobody has ever done it the most recent one was a uh, a guy um it was called spider tracks and we're like this guy's gonna do it we could track him live and he basically went he went from um you know the north pole went out to uh um alaska california i believe hawaii these islands here up over here then down to south america then he went to the alleged South Pole. And then they said, oh, the weather's too bad. We have to turn around. And they came back up through Brazil. And they came up here and back up to the North Pole. And we're like, well, they didn't do it. Guinness Book gave them the world record for circum southern circumnavigation. Okay, I did a little bit of research into this. There is no Guinness World Record for southern solo uh, circumnavigation. That's a really hard thing to say when you've had too many ice squashes. Um, the closest I could find is a guy called Travis Ludlow, who quite recently flew around the world on his own. Uh, he was quite a bit of a whippersnapper. He was about 21. He was 20 at the time, sorry. Um, yeah, and the route he took was absolutely nothing whatsoever like the thing that David Weiss brought up in the map there. I don't know what he was talking about, but that isn't so like circumnavigation. Um, and I'm always talking about flying close to the South Pole, turn around and come back. And if you're going to circumnavigate the Antarctica, you wouldn't need to go to the South Pole. You just need to fly around it. So absolutely nothing he said made any sense. So as I say, he's either completely ignorant or he's a liar. Why not both? Okay. And they just had another one recently that well, happened. Well, even on a globe Earth, they didn't circumvent South. They, they didn't circumnavigate, right? They, they had another one that... um. It, they had another one. I think it went from like South from South Africa. It went down. And now, if we're looking at this on a globe, it went down and it just went like this. It went over here and then it went back up, right? Didn't they didn't cut across that way, right? And so on a on a flat Earth, right? They went from South America. They just skirted over here and then they came over here. That's it. That's all they did, right? Nobody goes from. Santiago and pops up in New Zealand or Australia. No one's ever done it. Apart from LATAM flights, LA 800, which regularly goes exactly from Santiago in Chile to Auckland in New Zealand. They do it once a day. Uh, so does flight QFA 27 from Qantas, which goes directly from Santiago, Chile to Sydney airport. So that was a lie. And he knows it's a lie because He's been doing this for so long. He is so long in the tooth and he's so well established in the world of flat earthers. He has been corrected and provided with verifiable sources on so many occasions that it is now complete willful ignorance. He knows what he's saying is wrong, but he has his narrative to stick to and his bullshit to peddle. So, yeah, he's lying. Um, there are flights going from Santiago to Australia, Santiago to New Zealand. There were flights between... Uh, Santiago and uh, South Africa as well. Um, there aren't any at the moment. I was going to bring some up live on flightradar24.com, but there aren't any, but you can go for the past history. Uh, yeah, so there are flights that go in the Southern Hemisphere on a regular basis, and they do indeed uh, dip quite low to the Arctic Circle, but it only looks that way on the Mercator map. Here's something else I'm quickly going to show you. Okay, so this is Google Earth, uh, Google Maps rather, maps.google.com. Um, Google Earth is a separate entity, um, even though it's run by Google. I prefer this now because uh, it's browser based and it's a lot more, um, it used to be quite unwieldy, but they have improved it. But anyway, anyway, on to the point. So, as Dave was saying, he says that there are no flights between Auckland and New Zealand. I can prove that he hasn't. I can show you the flight data and the flight telemetry of several flights that do this trip on a daily basis. Now, he says that they, the flights tend to travel quite low to the Arctic Circle, then come back up again. There's a reason for that. Now, there's a measure option on Google. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Oh, God, what the hell happened there? 
That wasn't me, honestly. It might be this mouse. Right, so if I just click somewhere near Auckland, okay, that's my start point. Going to drag it over. I'm going to find Santiago. Uh, where's Santiago? Santiago, there we go. There you go. Now, as you can see, dips right down, comes back up again. Now, now, why is that? I hear you cry. Very simple reason. If we go down here and hit Globe View, that's basically a straight line, and it's part of the Great Circle. It's the same as you know any other circle navigation, you know any other navigation line. When you plot a map on the Mercator map, it makes it look vastly different. Here's a fun one: there are flights that regularly go from Doha in the United Arab Emirates, which I think is here, and they go to San Francisco. Okay, San Francisco. I'm just going to put randomly there and look at that flight path. Well, it actually goes off the top of the browser to the point I can't actually drag the screen down. But yeah, that really looks quite remarkable. And if you were to go, you know, base your things on a Mercator map, it would look a little bit bizarre. But hit the globe view, it's just another straight line, straight over the top. And that does, in fact, go pretty close to the North Pole. Um, again, flat earthers would say, well, that's just evidence, but they always ignore the contradictory information um, that doesn't fit their narrative. Again, so if I go from Santiago to Cape Town, nice straight line there, take it off the globe view, put the Mercator, and it looks like a wonky line. It goes down and comes back up on a Mercator map because a Mercator map is the worst possible map to use when you're trying to see what the Earth actually looks like. Thank you, Google. Good night. Right, okay, okay. So let's carry on. So again, Dave knows nothing about flight paths because he obviously he's looking at the Mercator map being a tra true representation of the planet when it most bloody clearly isn't. And he seems to com be completely ignorant of any kind of flight path that happens south of the equator. Oh, and also in regards to the flight time, it's only about 10 hours. Um, and actually, obviously they're verifiable. If that was to be on a flat Earth, They'd have to go the very long way around to follow that flight path, and you're probably talking three days. Well, okay. talk, talk to us then about flight paths. Right. Right. So flight paths are, 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 flight paths are the, the death blow to the ball, okay? So you got your equator over the middle, okay? And every airport above the equator is a northern airport and every airport below the equator is a southern airport right very simple and just explaining you know globe reality okay it's an amazing leap of logic there northern airports in the northern hemisphere and southern airports in the southern hemisphere i think this man's actually smarter than i gave him credit for so if you put all of the airports that are in the north in a hat and you picked out two of them randomly any combination of any two a flight from one to the other will never ever cross the equator, right? There's just no reason to cross the equator because you're going from a northern location, right? Going from a northern location to another northern location. It doesn't matter. You would never go below the equator because that would be a longer flight. And guess what? No flight routes do that. No flight routes in the north from a north airport to a, a northern destination um, ever, ever cross below the equator. Yeah, why would they need to? If you are in the northern hemisphere, and you're going to somewhere else in the Northern Hemisphere, of course you're not going to go south of the equator. Why would you possibly need to? If you're talking about a single flight, yeah, if you're talking about a stopover, that's a completely different beast altogether. So the same should be true on a ball because there has to be symmetry. You should never have to go, <clears throat> excuse me, from a southern location into the north, but many, many, many times, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, many, many times that happens. Here's a, here's a women's... Um, soccer team that was going from from uh brazil to um sydney and they stopped in tahiti okay right so on a on a globe it went they went all the way up here and then all the way down here like why didn't they just cut across right by antarctica and you know there's easter island out here they could stop at if there's an emergency right why didn't they go across the reason they didn't go right across is because generally um there are no uh, commercial flights whatsoever on the planet run by any commercial plane um, company that go directly from Brazil to Sydney is too far. Um, the flight, the plane, the plane he's actually talking about was a specific charter flight 
quite re- it was actually quite recently. So I'm 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 pleased he's um he's doing some recent research, not sticking on to old uh, old ideas, but he's still getting it completely wrong. Yeah, like I say, it was a, a recent charter flight for a soccer team to come back to uh, from Brazil to um, Sydney. <clears throat> now the thing is, I did look into it. They could have done the full trip in one go, but it's something like a thirteen to fourteen hour flight solid. If you're going if you're going to go straight there, nobody wants to do that. So they stopped in Tahiti to refuel, take on more provisions, and then carry on the flight. I don't know what, how long the stopover was, but yeah, everybody needs a break, including pilots. Um, but like I say, there are no flights that go directly from Brazil to Sydney. And this was a specific charter flight where they landed in Tahiti to take a break. Now, here's what the trip looked like on a flat Earth. Now, someone with a that's actually actually thinking, they'd be like, "Well, why don't they stop in America or 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 Canada and continue?" Because that's a real straight line on a flat Earth map. And the answer is because America and Canada require them to have U.S. or Canadian passports for every single team member, and they don't all have them. No, that's a complete lie. You have your own passport. So if you're not indigenous to a country, you don't have to have US or Canadian tr- uh, passports if you're just landing there for a stopover. That's an utter pile of garbage. And um, we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see some some good stuff. This is uh, this is this is uh, this is good. So here we go. Um, let's start with this. Substitute teachers losing their pupils again. It's halfway, so the equator is halfway in between the center and the outer part. So let me, so let me, um, let me show people how, how that works. Sure. Um, so I don't mean to interrupt your flight path presentation, but I no, think no, it's no, important. that's okay. That's all right. I, pe- people say that I'm very, uh, I, I'm scatterbrained sometimes. It's because we're we're talking about so many different things. There's so many different ways to go. Yeah, and you don't want to contradict yourself. Here is, um, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so people can see it. Oops. Um, how come that's not working? Um, app full screen. There we go. All right. So you have a uh, you have the inner yellow line that's near the that the sun right now. The sun is over almost over that inner yellow line, and that's the Tropic of Cancer. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. And then the outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. Right. right? We've all heard that. And then that's there's there's a very thin orange line halfway a red line halfway in between them, and that's the equator. Okay. Right. Now the sun travels six months in to June twenty first, where it's over the Tropic of Cancer. Well, we're past June twenty first. It's already moving its way out. I'm going to jump forward. July, August, September, October. This appears to be showing the sun, um, in its path around the flat Earth. Uh, per month rather than per day so while the clocks are spinning really really fast apparently the sun doesn't move on for six months november and december so in december it's out over the tropic of capricorn and australia has their summer in december that's the height of their summer you know why because the sun is directly above them this actually makes less sense than the uh, magical um, self-propelled self-suspended sun and moon in the flat earth sky okay they're having their summer but he, me here in connecticut i'm having my winter because guess what the sun is far away from me there's so much contradictory information on this one single map it's discrediting itself it's debunking itself because absolutely nothing about it makes any sense whatsoever apart from the fact the area the sun is illuminating is magically going around a dark area on the other side of the North Pole. How does that work? It would be the other way around, surely. Um, there we are, May, June. So in June, it's in and it's higher and it's warmer. And that's how seasons work. That's how the sun works. Um, and that's how it goes around. It just circles around. You look like you have a question. I was just, because I was just about to ask you about seasons. So... Uh, my my understanding previous to what you just showed was that the sun kind of doesn't move. It's always going in the same circle in the flat earth model, but you're saying it does. And that's why we have seasons. Her brain is melting. You can see in her face. She cannot make sense of anything that Dave is saying. Now I'm making no um, attestations about her intelligence. Um, 
the, some of the crap she comes out with on other videos would m lead me to believe she is a desperately unintelligent woman who's got a smart camera in her home um, because of the, some of the crap she comes out with. Yeah, but yeah, you can see she's really struggling with this. I think it's important to consider things that just don't make sense. If we're talking about stars that are billions of light years away and we can see their light, and yet um, I've seen you show, for example, the view of the moon, um, or was it the sun, from other planets, it, it simply doesn't make sense. If you actually think about it, the problem is people have a hard time understanding the sizes and distances and brightnesses. Let's talk about flight paths, then we'll talk about star brightness. Let's is do that, that. Cool? Sure. Okay. So here's a, um, a, a shot from Auckland. Uh, it goes all the way up to Los Angeles and then down to Lima, Peru. Now, everybody in Auckland, they don't want to go to Los Angeles. They want to go to Lima, Peru, but they go all the way up there. They cross the equator. Here's the equator right here, this uh, black, little black line there, right? But when we look at that trip on a flat Earth, look at that. It's a straight line. Again, this is colossal cherry picking. There are flights that go from um, Lima, Peru to Auckland or Auckland to Lima, Peru via Chile. There are no direct flights going from Lima direct to Auckland for the same reason there's no flights going from Brazil or Brasilia to Sydney. It's too long. Um, this flight path he's particularly cherry picked for this specific reason. Our wager is probably a flight company that is based in and around North America probably American Airlines or something along those lines. Um, they do this, they, they'll choose a specific, like Qantas is a good one they use sometimes. Um, yeah, there are direct flights from Chile to Auckland um, for the purposes of going from Peru to Auckland, just with one stopover. There are no direct flights. The flight path he specifically chose for this demonstration is an extreme version of a stopover that is not in keeping what everyone else does every day of the week. I will continue, um, probably not with this because it's gotten to the point now that, um, as I said before, he knows he's wrong, he knows he's lying and the expression on this young woman's face, I'll say young, she's probably older than me, just like a load of makeup, sorry that was unnecessarily spiteful, um, you can see in her face she's not buying any of it but she wants this guy on her YouTube channel to get her numbers up. So it's mutually beneficial derp. MBD. No, that's not a very good acronym, is it? Um, so anyway, I will leave that at that for the minute because, as I say, brain melt. Dave Fries doesn't know anything about stars, doesn't know anything about fly paths, doesn't know anything about anything, really. Cherry picking the specific flights, very lame excuses, just making stuff up about what's past the ice wall when there is no ice wall. It's just par for the course, really. Um, what I'll do, I will watch the rest of the video, but I'll do it on my own time. And if there's anything that needs to be picked out, I will. But I'm going to leave that as it is. I doubt very much if it gets any more interesting that, than not that it was interesting in the first place. I do apologise. Thanks very much for watching if you made it this far. Thank you very much for all your comments on the previous videos. Um, nice to see that Dave himself actually uh, commented on the... Uh, the first one of this series, uh, living rent free in your head, am I Dave? Don't flatter yourself, you really aren't that important. And the only time I ever think about you outside of the context of um, doing YouTube videos is if I if I make a, a minor cock up at work and think, oh, damn, that was a bit silly, I just reassure myself that I'm not as stupid as David Vice. Okay, I think that'll wrap up. I just think it's quite amusing that the title of this video is finally proof the earth is flat when it's just the same tired old nonsensical arguments being repeated over and over again but it's just a disingenuous liar talking to a sponge um i mean when i say sponge i don't mean she looks like a sponge or she's got the intellect of a sponge although she may given some of the stuff she's come out with recently uh, but i will leave it at that so thanks very much for watching i will see you next time whatever that won't be thank you